All right, YouTube. Let's talk about how I did this pillar bedding. I just realized I had never made the video yet, even though I just began the rest of this stock project. So I want to take a minute to talk about how it is I bedded this and why I chose to do that. So let's get to it. First, what I did was I came in with a thinner round of uh, JB weld on my first attempt, my first go around. I made like basically like uh, as tight as I could get to this screw, I came in with the JB weld, but I didn't try to touch the screw the first time around. So you'll see that it's got a nice clean hole there now, but I'll tell you about that in a second. So what I first did, came in, and I just left it loose. You know, I, I tried to like tab it down as best I could when I applied it. And then because it sat in this position right here, which is just like, you know, upright like normal, that it kind of drooped, some of it drooped, and then about an hour in, I came back with my applicator. I used a piece of a wire hanger, and then I just kind of scooped it back up to get it nice and flush again against these walls. And the first round, this made kind of a dimply coat across the bottom. It didn't like lay flat, flat. And I think that's because of all the touching it I did as it dried. And then at the same time when I was applying that, I came back here and I applied the same technique basically. I just used a piece of wire coat hanger and just scooped it off my thing into here and uh, onto the rails right here. I guess you could call them a rail. This is where the receiver sits. It sits on these pieces of wood cutout right here. And uh, <clears throat> I did as best as I could to keep it vertical and then you know the same thing happened. It was starting to droop an hour in so I came back here and kind of pushed it back up and <clears throat> that didn't that finish didn't turn out very nice and even it actually looked a lot like this section right here it's kind of like wavy and bumpy so what I had done was feeling defeated <clears throat> I sanded it down semi flat you know I, if I were to try to sand it completely nice it would have just been gone because that's how bumpy and stuff it kind of turned out to be um, it was a relatively thin coat though so this was my idea was I really wanted to get good nice flush epoxy all on these rails that was to me was like my top priority was these bottom rails all three of this U right here and I kept thinking of a good way to make that happen <coughs> excuse me um, so I came here and I sanded all of this down again uh, it had a nice amount it was still totally gray um, but then I applied a second coat, a nice thick coat, and that's how I got all this material here and all this material up in here as kind of like, this is where the V-block is, and then this is the bottom of the barrel, and where it attaches to the receiver, and this nice amount of material up here in this front part right here, that is due to me, uh, I petroleum jellied. I Vaselined the receiver and trigger group, the whole nine yards, and I dropped it in to the receiver. And that's how it looks so nice and flush. Like, this back wall is really nice, if you can see. See how nice that is? It's tight, it's super tight. So what it was, was I applied my second coat, a nice thick coat, all to the same areas all over again. And about an hour in, I did the same thing. I scooped it back up, and then about an, another hour, I uh, came back and I touched it just to feel how dry it was. And it was to the point where my fingerprints would stick into it. And I felt like that was a really good time to grease up my receiver and just drop it in so that way it would smash all this epoxy right to where it would sit nice. And as you can see, the result came out very nice. I was really pleased with it. A little bit stuck to my um, receiver at the back wall and a little bit here. But it really wasn't a big deal to clean it off. Um, it still has a tiny bit of staining on a couple of little pieces, little segments. I guess I could show you that, but it's not a big deal to me. But as you can see, I didn't screw it back together. I sat it in. And then I squeezed it down as hard as I could, like a bunch of times, like just trying to go back and over it, back over it, you know. And um, this back wall had a little bit squish out the top. And 
these rails had some squish out a little bit right into here, this area. Uh, and then I left it in there. I just left it in there just to sit. And about four or five hours later, I came back and I pulled it out. And only, again, I, I'll say it again, like only a tiny bit stuck to the receiver and it was from like right in here on the rail. I guess I just didn't get quite enough petroleum jelly on that section right there. And I think a little bit, because there's an imperfection in my receiver right here, there's little recesses in it, like where from the molding process. And uh, I guess I just didn't get enough here, so it's got that one blank spot. I guess I like pushed it around when I was putting it, when I was dropping it in. I think what happened was it pushed it a little bit, but then it's got nice coverage all through. I don't know if I can show you the angles. See, that's how you can tell. See how it's got that nice defined line? And then it kind of meets that back edge. But, anywho, let's talk about what I did after that. So I pull, like five hours later, I pull it out. And it's got this great looking impression, you know, super sharp, super crisp, really tight. But this is the deal. What I wanted was linear, I wanted linear pressures, and I didn't want lateral pressures. And where I'm getting this information from is the harmonics um, video that a really good channel made out. His name is Tiberiosaurus Rex, or Tiberiosaurus Rex. He's like an outstanding shooter. He is like, wow super knowledgeable. So I took a cue and I tried to apply his knowledge he has on a video he made about rifle harmonics and so I felt like if I get really good um, complete coverage along these walls on the bottom and here and I get nice amount of back pressure, nice flush fit here against this back wall of the receiver and also into these edges, that'll keep it from moving side to side and it'll obviously keep it nice and secure, as secure as it could probably be in this stock. And I also have a little bit up front too so it can't really slide forward at all. It's very tight and um, I don't want side to side pressures because I think that with expansion and heat temperatures or shooting and all the cool harmonic stuff that Tiberiosaurus Rex was mentioning, I don't want that. So what I did was I kind of came back here with sandpaper and I relieved this again. so that Because when I first took the receiver back out, I mean, this was no slack. I mean, this was tight all the way through. This whole area was just super balls tight. I almost couldn't get it out. That's how good a connection it made or how form-fitting it was. So... Just to like give you guys a little bit of philosophy about how I'm doing this betting, I have no idea if that's even totally accurate and it's worthwhile or should you just keep it the way it was when it came out. I felt that what I really, the goal is to get a nice good seat here along this bottom U against this back wall, which really turned out really nice. You should be able to see this back wall is so tight. It's exactly like the receiver. And this nice amount of pressure here and not so much here on the sides because that might mess me up like with weird vibration stuff and that's what it's all relating to is the vibrations from having it too tight or maybe having pieces that were tight and then not pieces that were tight you know like the difference in thicknesses all in the sidewalls I didn't want to deal with any of that so I sanded it all the way to relief it so that's the idea and I also sanded these sidewalls up here too to to not be super duper tight tight and hopefully they don't touch really that's the goal but it also adds just that little bit more rigidity to just the fact that it's there connecting to this back wall all that kind of stuff so that's the philosophy behind bedding I haven't seen a video that was this good to talk about what you want to do for bedding because this will really snug it up that's what you want that's because you only have one mounting point in a Ruger 1022 and that's the whole problem with 